welcome back to another sled video. I picked this thing up a couple weeks ago uh, with a couple different things in mind, but the main reason that I wanted it, honestly, was just for the engine, the wearing harness, and the whole RER setup. I've been thinking about an engine swap for the Everest for the longest time, and I don't think it really makes sense to go to a liquid with that. Just too much work, too much of a headache. But I think this upgraded dual carb version of the 503 with the oil injection and the RER would be pretty cool. Not that I need reverse with that drive on, drive off trailer that I have. I mean, loading and unloading is pretty simple as it is, but I just think it'd be pretty sweet to have RER on a vintage chassis like that. That, and I also have another project in mind that I'm going to need a 121 suspension for, and I think this one's going to work just fine. It'll need some upgrades, but I think it's going to be pretty close to what I need for what I want to do. And she's a low mileage machine, less than 2,000 miles on it, can't really beat that. And other than the ripped up seat, she's really not in bad shape at all. Just really dirty, needs a good bath. So I think that's what we're going to do today, is just get her cleaned up, go through the carbs, make sure it's running real well. Um, it is registered through the end of 2024, so I don't think there's going to be anything too major wrong with it. And it's actually got a sled hitch on it and what looks like a homemade taillight harness. So I'm guessing that this was someone's ice fishing sled. Let's start by just getting her cleaned up, I guess. Well, I got my simple green and a bucket of soapy water, so let's get to work. Well, that actually cleaned up pretty damn nice. Can't complain, really. I mean, you slap a new seat cover on there and maybe do something about the flake and paint and the trailing arms and pretty much right back in 1998. And I think that is going to make it all that much harder to rip this thing apart for parts. Well, I had the battery charger sitting on this thing overnight. Let's go ahead and take a crack at starting it and see what happens. Well, I think I'm just gonna bump the key here first and see I guess if the starter works, what it sounds like. So that's positive. Guy said it ran, so I guess let's just try and fire it up and see see what happens. I don't see a fuel shut off on it anyway, so we should be good in that respect. Uh, I'm gonna go full choke, I guess, and give it a try. Maybe. Oh, she fired. I bet you I probably just flooded it out, didn't I? Yeah, I totally just flooded it. I can smell gas. <laughs> I suppose with the weather the way it was this week, we're up in the 50s. She probably didn't need all that choke. 
I'm gonna go clean these off and we'll uh, try it again. Obviously you guys heard of flare, so I think it's safe to say we have spark. Regardless, I think we're gonna end up pulling the carbs off this thing, that's for sure. There's no way around that at this point, which I mean, I kind of expected that. I'm just happy it actually fired. Always, always a risk taking people at their word when you're buying stuff like this, but um, I guess the reality of it is it kind of just makes better YouTube content, I think, if you don't know what you're getting into before you get into it. So. But sometimes you get burned. It's just how it goes. Try her again. No choke this time. Well, she runs, but uh, I guess that's not too surprising based on the outward appearance of it. It didn't really look all that bad to begin with. I think I just had the choke on there when I didn't need to have it on and just flooded her out, but definitely sounds a little bit boggy. Let's at least get the carbs off, clean those up, and then put some fresh plugs in it and see if she sounds any happier that way. And then while we're digging around in there, we can see if we can find anything else that needs to be addressed. Right off the bat, that's a problem. This looks like it's actually, one of these is definitely installed backwards. These car boots in the air box, I think, I think it's this one. Oh, let's see if I can get that out of there. Oh crap, there we go. Yeah. Like I said, I'm pretty, pretty sure that should be in there the opposite way, like that. One of these is definitely installed backwards, and I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yeah, so this one was in here, this side out, which is obviously different from that one, so... I think for now we'll flip him back around when we reinstall it, make sure it's in there the right way. These cracks shouldn't make really much of a difference um, as far as like air leaks or anything like that. Um, we don't only really have to be worried about the engine side of the carbs, um, but since these are so cracked up, we'll definitely take a closer look at those as well. Well, before we dig into the carbs and while we wait for the ultrasonic cleaner to heat up, let's take another look at this air box. That was kind of a weird situation. Obviously, somebody must have been in here before messing with stuff. And yeah, that's the only thing that I can figure is this one went in backwards, but I don't really like how that's all chewed up. Um, I mean, the odds of that falling off and getting sucked into the engine are slim, but probably not zero. So I think while we have this out, we might as well just trim that up. And, I mean, that really shouldn't affect the air intake or anything like that. I mean, the amount of air that it, the engine sucks in. And that one looks fine, so we'll leave that one alone. But, like I said, I think I kind of just want to trim this up at the very least. So, knowing my luck, 
one of those would just break off and end up ingesting it and ruin the engine. Hey, you know what? Screw it. I was going to clean these by hand, but I'm just going to be starting up the ultrasonic cleaner anyway. We'll just toss them in there with the carbs. I did scratch a C. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but I put a C and an M on the carbs just to designate them as clutch and mag side. Um, obviously not a rotary valve engine, so I doubt these are going to be jetted, staggered, or any differently than one another. But I um, figured that's probably a good practice to get into. Just keep them on their respective sides, not mix them up. And another interesting thing, too, there is no primer on this sled, but these carbs are pre-tapped and set up with the primer input on each one. So I could easily slap a primer on here if I wanted to. So that's kind of nice. Let those simmer for a cycle or two and see how they turn out. Well, the Beaver did another fantastic job on the outside of these carbs. Let's crack them open and see how the insides look. Normally, obviously, it would make more sense to take these apart and put the small parts in the cage and drop them in the ultrasonic cleaner with the carb body, but I'm still kind of interested in how well the insides get cleaned out if you just leave the bowls and everything on. Remember last time I was pretty amazed at how clean the carbs off the summit got when I ran those through there without taking them apart. So I'm wondering if these are going to be the same way. Yeah, not so much. I mean, there's still quite a bit of gunk in there. Um, would definitely pay to separate those, I think, and run them through there one more time. As we thought, kind of just a better idea to take them apart in the beginning and then run them through that way. Yeah, glad we decided to do this anyway. These things are absolutely filthy. But that's to be expected, I guess. Looks like they're definitely running just regular old ethanol fuel in here instead of the higher octane stuff. All this green buildup, that's usually what I see. And, uh, power sports carbs that have older ethanol fuel in them. It's like you let them sit for more than a month or two and they gum up real bad. Let's see if I can get this pilot out of here. Pilot does not want to come out of there, so we're just going to have to run a needle down in there and spray it out with some carb cleaner and hope that's good enough. But. And that needle jet did not want to come out of there. But she's out now. Doesn't look like I damaged it, so that's good. <laughs> and I think the rest of it will leave as is for now. Let's see what this guy looks like. The main and the clutch side was a 180. I'm guessing this one's... The mag side here is going to be a 180 as well, but we'll, we'll check once we get in there. Yeah, that one's still a little bit nasty in there as well. It's like half and half. That side looks clean, this side doesn't. I wonder if we had an air bubble up in there, maybe. And that's why that didn't get as clean. What's the main going to be... I'm betting it's going to be the same. It's going to be another 180. I can get the damn thing cleaned off good enough to read it. I'll let you know. Ooh, no, not the same. It's either a 170 or a 178. It's got to be a 170. I don't think 178 would make a whole hell of a lot of sense. But, all right, so good thing we checked that. We'll remember that now. So clutch side, 180. Mag side, 170. I didn't think those were going to be staggered, but it just shows what I know, I guess. Let's see if this one comes out any easier. Much easier. Oh, the shit you see when you open carbs up. That's no good. Although it was running like that, I guess, so <laughs> can't be the worst. Here, let me zoom you in so you can see this. This guy must have been dropped at some point. At least that's my best guess. I shouldn't pick at this too much, but maybe we can repair that better. I've been through quite a few carbs and I've never seen one with a post broke off like that. There you go, now you're in focus. That, I think that's what that is. It just looks like a crack all the way around the outside and there is some sort of uh, some sort of adhesive holding it together. So that's that's not good. What the hell would they put in there that uh, is resistant to fuel? Is it some kind of JB weld? I don't know. Well, of all the things I was expecting to see in here, that was not one of them. Let's see if we can get this pin out without breaking that off again. Although, I don't know what to do there. Should we break it off? 
Maybe JB Weld it? I don't know what's in there, but it doesn't look like JB Weld. Probably shouldn't mess with it too much. But I have a feeling it's probably gonna break when I try and get this pin out. Well, shit. Sure enough! <laughs> How in the hell am I gonna fix that? Well, that's what I get for thinking this was just gonna be a boring video, just an easy carb cleaning, and that was gonna be it. Well, at least something interesting happened, I guess. Uh, I can't get this pin out. So I'm just gonna try and tap on it here and see what happens. I'm going to heat it up. It almost looks like there's some sort of epoxy in that side as well. And that pin looks like it's bent. When the hell does that happen? Somebody just must have dropped this carb at some point. That's all I can figure. There she went. Yeah, that is majorly bent. Yeah, she definitely has a curve to it there, although I think I kind of just made that worse with the hammer. But we'll see if we can straighten that out. Well, all I can really think to do is just put it in the vise and try and maybe tap it back straight. Well, that doesn't look like it's doing anything, does it? Kind of just looks like it's making it, putting a jog in it. Well, let's just try this then. Straighten you out with my nice crooked vice jaws. Well, not perfect, but I think for what it is and what it does, that's probably good enough. And look at this now. The lip on that needle jet is just all tore up. I don't know what the hell happened to this thing. <laughs> oh, I bet that almost looks like somebody went at that with a needle nose, maybe trying to pull it out. I bet that's what it was. I don't think that should really affect how it runs too much, but still, interesting. There you can kind of see it better. Just all ripped up. Yeah, you can see. You can see the lines there from the jaws on the pliers. That had to be what it was. All right, everything is back in the ultrasonic cleaner, as I'm sure you can hear. I have to go figure out if this is going to work to repair that post or not does say that it's resistant to fuel, but I don't know if that means you can submerse it in fuel, like in a carburetor bowl, or not. So I'm gonna go read up on that and see what I find. Might have to go pick up something else. Well, this stuff should work. Kind of reading mixed results as to whether or not it's actually submersible in fuel, but our joint here is gonna be above the float line anyway, so that shouldn't actually be submerged. It'll just be near fuel, so. Um, I'm thinking it should probably work, so let's get this mixed up and see if we can get this guy back in place. I got that sitting in there as straight as I can right now. I think I'm gonna let that sit overnight, but before I go in the house, I'm gonna grab my heat gun and just hit that real fast, because it's it's pretty cold out here right now. And uh, normally, if I remember correctly, that stuff sets up pretty quick, but it seems like it's kind of lagging behind here. The stuff on the cardboard is still, I mean, it's getting there, but I think a little bit of heat definitely won't hurt. All right, that's tacking up pretty good now. It's starting to hold in place. I see we are tipped just a little bit that way, but holes still line up. Pin goes through nice and straight, so I'm not too worried about that. Still gonna let that sit overnight, let it harden up a bit more. Hopefully it'll reach its full fuel resistant strength by morning, and then we can put it back together. So I'll go set this down and I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, cold out this morning. Let's check this out and see how it's set up. It seems pretty good, I think. Doesn't have any wiggle to it. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. It's 
go ahead and throw that back together, I guess. So I couldn't get the pilots out of either of these. They're just too froze up. But this one here, you can see see daylight through. Oh, well, you guys can see that. So that one should be fine. But this one looks like we've got a little bit of work to do yet. Something's got to be blocked up in there because we can't, can't see through that one. So let's try and get that cleaned out. Here we go. A little bit of carb cleaner and compressed air, and she cleaned right out. All right, let's get these put back on the sled. So originally I thought someone had dropped this and it fell on that post and that's how it uh, how it broke but looking at this a little bit closer um, this is actually the wrong size pin that goes through the posts to hold the uh, the float stop float actuator needle actuator whatever you want to call that there um, this is the right size I don't know how well you guys can can see that there but it's a completely different pin and this one's a little bit bigger so I'm thinking maybe they must have lost one or if they were cleaning a bunch of carbs and just grabbed this one by mistake and tried to drive it through here. But uh, that's kind of what it seems like is, um, you know, they're trying to drive this back in place and hammered it in there and that's what broke that off. At least that's my best guess. But I took a drill bit and opened those holes up a little bit. Almost opened them up a little bit too much. Um, but I think I can peen the end of this over and we'll get it to get it to stay in there. Let me work on that a little bit. Actually, that should be fine. It's not falling out of there, shaking it, so it should be all right. But I got a couple comments on my ultrasonic cleaner video too, um, saying not to use simple green on brass and aluminum, that it would change the color. And I mean, you can see a good example of that there. Um, I'm not sure, you guys will have to let me know if that does anything um, destructive to the metal, if it's degrading it in any way, that's bad for it. Um, personally, I don't really care if it changes the colors as long as it gets it clean, no big deal to me. But like I said, I'm just about out of that uh, regular simple green. So when I get some new stuff, I'll get the, the carb friendly or brass and aluminum friendly version to use in there. But for now, it seems to work fine. You just you just get this color change on all the brass stuff. So, And I am still out of WD-40. you got to pick some up. So I'm just going to coat everything in PB Blaster for now before we put it back together. Mag side was the 170 main. <laughs> Uh-oh. Guess what I forgot to do. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to spread those apart any without breaking that stand off again. So let me see if I can just file this down and get it to fit. All right, I think we're filed down well enough to fit there. Hope they can get that back in all the way. That pin's not going to fall out of there. Should be tight enough. Uh, I think we're gonna be all right here. I think you're gonna be okay here. Well, I don't know what the hell's going on here. These are the most nightmarish carbs I've ever worked on in my life, but this was probably my fault. You know, I was just talking about uh, wondering if Simple Green actually degrades brass or if it just changes the color. Um, I'm guessing that's what happened is that probably degraded the metal. And uh, the threads on the main jet broke off in the needle, or in the needle jet. So uh, let me grab an easy out, and we'll just back those out of there. I think I have another 180 um, sitting back here that we can toss in there, but that's, uh, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I guess uh, maybe that does, maybe that does harm the metal. I'm sure I'll get some fun comments for that one. I should just back right out of there with an easy out. Yep, no problem. Well, after digging through my tackle box of spare parts and jets and shit for all my old bikes managed to find a 200 so I think 200 is close enough to 180 we'll toss it in there for now and it'll probably just run a little bit fat on the top end but I'll get a jet set ordered up for it and we'll get that swapped out eventually all right all clean and ready to go back on All right, let's see if she starts any easier and how happy she is with that messed up carb. We'll go no choke this time. I'm sure it'll crank a little bit just to get fuel to the carbs again, but let's just see what happens. I'm gonna go half choke with it.
Still seems a touch boggy at idle. I want to see where these mixture screws are at. Make sure they're even. Um, and then maybe just change the plugs out. The ones that were in there were pretty fouled. Half. One. One and a half. Two. I believe that should be a little bit leaner. If I'm thinking about that correctly, but we'll find out here in a second. And it looks like I don't actually have any fresh plugs here, so... We're just going to take her out in the yard and try and open it up a little bit, see what happens. Well, as I eased it out the door there, I could smell some burning rubber and here's the old belt. Here's a new one, that's the right size for it. I don't know if the old one's burnt up that bad or if it's just not the right belt, but it's definitely not the right size. I was able to just slip it right off there without even opening the clutch sheaves up. So let's go put this one on there and see if that works out any better. Oh my God, the new belt on there, she's a wheelie machine. It's quite strange. I'm sure you guys saw there's like no snow left out there, but next week they got us in like anywhere between 8 to 14 inches, so should get a little something out of that at least, enough to go play around again, but yeah, carb cleaning and a new belt on this thing and she's a new machine. Even with that bigger jet in there on the one side, I didn't really even notice much of a difference up on the top end, so we'll still probably come back and correct that. So I know I was saying I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this one yet, if I was going to try and flip it or if I was going to keep it and use the parts for the Everest. Um, and that's probably the way that I'm going to go. I mean, after riding around the yard here, I don't think I'm going to sell it. That was just too much fun. But still not 100% sure what I'm going to do. Um, if I'm just going to mod this one out and make it like an S-chassis mod sled, or rob the parts and put them in the Everest, I still think that's kind of the way that I'm leaning. Um, but we'll see what happens. I don't know yet. But yeah, for sure, that was like the most fun I've had in the backyard this year in five minutes. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I actually, I grew up riding the same exact sled. It was a 98 or 99 Formula DLX, but it was the 380, not the 500. But that one was the same way. I mean, if you get the right snow conditions like this, where it's all pretty much hard pack on top of a little bit of ice, um, that would just lift the front end right off the ground too. And I mean, granted I was like 50 or 60 pounds lighter back then, but um, I think that also has a little bit to do with the uh, original SC10 skid. I think it kind of just transfers weight a lot better than the SC102 or SC103, but. Either way, technical stuff aside, that was a hell of a good time. I kind of want to go back out there, but <laughs> I don't, don't want to tear up the snow too much, and it's like 40, 45 degrees again, so, um, I mean, I don't really think this thing would overheat, being that it's a fan, fan cool, but you never know. Just better, better to play it safe, I guess. So, going forward, you guys will definitely be seeing more of this thing, just not exactly sure in what way yet. But for now, I think we're going to tuck it away in the attached garage up by the house just to get it out of here, get a little bit more room. Um, and then I think we're going to rip into the ZX chassis Summit next. Got to figure out why that thing's leaking coolant. So 
Hopefully we can figure that out and have it ready by the time we get that possible 14 inches of snow next week. So probably not the most interesting video that you guys have ever watched with it just being a carb cleaning and a belt change really, but I guess it just kind of goes to show that you uh, never know what you're going to be getting into when you buy something used off somebody else. I mean, especially when these sleds are getting all to be 20, 30 years old, you never know what kind of a mess you're going to find when you open up a carburetor or pop the hood on a sled. So, As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.